sleeping. So today I'm finally gonna do a full day of eating on a training day and I'm just over 15 weeks out of the Arnold's UK. I got my official acceptance to do it, I guess you could say. So I'm gonna be actually doing an interview with them, uh, the pro sports media on Sunday. So that's really cool. I'm really excited to be able to go to the UK and compete and do the Arnold's. So I'm just, uh, I just made my first meal, which is, uh, as you can well, you'll see it over there, but uh, it's just egg, eggs, egg whites, uh, turkey bacon, cream of rice, and a banana. Uh, and usually as I'm just making my breakfast, I just drink coffee and I have a spoonful of uh, collagen in there too. It's vanilla flavored, so it doesn't add any calories, but uh, collagen is good for many things like your skin, your hair, nails, and things like that. So I just like to do that every day in the morning. Um, yeah, so we're gonna do a full day of eating on the training day because everybody's been asking me to do this, so I'm gonna do it. And you're gonna see all the pretty boring food I eat, but hey, let's do it. All right, so this is meal one for me right here. So I'm having so 400 grams of egg whites, two whole eggs, two slices of turkey bacon, and that's uh, 120 grams of cream of rice, dry measure, and one banana. So this is typically what I eat on a training day uh, for my first meal. The only difference on a rest day would be I'd have oats instead of cream of rice, but it's the same portion right now. And instead of a banana, I'd have berries. Um, so my calories have pretty much stayed the same the past few weeks. I haven't really gone into a necessarily a calorie deficit yet. So uh, just because my body's uh, been improving in the right direction with what I'm eating now and just how training is and everything. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna get this meal in and we'll go from there. Do this right now, it's fine. So uh, just making some food for the day. So I have like my rice for the day. I just put that in uh, to cook. So I have three meals of rice. Uh, and the way Patrick, uh, Patrick Tor does it is he does everything raw. So I weigh the, weigh the rice raw and then cook it and so I just cook like my three portions at once and I just you know portion it out into three even portions for my meals um, and then basically since I moved because I moved to a new place I've just been using the air fryer for my meals so Tyson that's enough fuck guys like just chunks of water every time um, so anyways so I've been using the air fryer for most of my food uh, just because I haven't been using my barbecue, just because I don't have grass outside yet, so I'm waiting until I have grass in the backyard, then I'll use my barbecue. But, so I've been cooking everything in the air fryer, so right now uh, I'm just cooking some chicken, because my next meal I'll have chicken. Um, but then I'll also be cooking a little bit later some sweet potatoes and flank steak as well. Um, but yeah, so I basically use the air fryer for almost everything, and it works well. So I'm just gonna get this ready, and then uh, meal two will be coming up pretty soon. Okay, so meal two, I'm gonna have, well, the asparagus is already in there, it's about 75 grams. Uh, I'm not a obsessed over the exact grams, I guess you could say, um, with things, like if it's a couple grams more, a couple grams less, I'm not gonna freak out about it, because, you know, it is it is what it is. Um, so yeah, I got my rice cooked, I got the chicken ready, so I'm just gonna portion this, so. Um, basically, like I said, like I do measure things raw, so cooked, like the chicken raw would be 250, 250 grams. Cooked, it's about 200 grams. Um, and the rice, it's uh, like each portion that I'd be using is 120 grams raw. So cooked, that's about 300 grams of rice. So I'm pretty much portioning approximately 300 grams of cooked jasmine rice and 200 grams of cooked chicken in here. Um, and then that'll be my, my meal number two. Alright guys, so two meals in and now we're going to head into the grocery store to get some groceries. Um, so I'm really fortunate I got a grocery store really close to home so it's like a two minute drive. Uh, so we're going to head in there and you'll get to see all the normal food I usually pick up plus uh, some other stuff because uh, getting food for the girlfriend as well. So um, 
we're gonna do that now so gotta put this on before I go in the store because that's just the rules they have here so let's do it Sweet potatoes here. Um, I eat them well, like one meal a day right now, so good enough to last me about a week. How do you look for a good sweet potato? I don't know. I just like them. I like it for like a, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like a consistent shape, I guess you could say. So they're not like all different shapes and sizes. I try and get them look consistent. It's easier to cook them and and so on, easier to cut them. So these, these ones are kind of weird to go with. So yeah, this is, a, this is what I drink intra-workout. Um, so I'll use about 500 mils, so about half one of these. So I buy these every week uh, to have for my training session. two beef meals a day so I get some flank that's my choice of choice of meat uh, so I'll get a few of these and then uh, we'll go down and get some chicken as well this one. should be enough for a week so my other two meals of the day uh, sorry during the day are chicken meals so I'll end up getting the other protein I'm gonna get is chicken. So I usually go with the, this brand just because it's a good price and it's good quality. Sometimes I go for the free from brand, but it's a little expensive. And uh, yeah, just right now I'd just rather go with this. Um, I've got enough to last me about a week. So if I get about five packs to last me a week. Yeah, so currently in my diet, I have turkey bacon with my breakfast, so that's gonna stay in there until Patrick tells me to cut it. So I have two slices in the morning, so getting some of this inside. We're almost ran out. I think I have like one, one or two pieces left at home, so I just get another pack today. Should last me a week. So we're getting some cooking spray. Uh, I use this in the air fryer, because what I'll do is I'll put tin foil in there and then I'll spray it a bit. Makes it easier to clean the air fryer. That's a pro tip for sure, uh, especially when you use it as much as I do. Um, and then just like spraying my pans or whatever. This is what I use. I don't use any type of oil or whatever. I just use this. Um, some people think it's bad for you, whatever, but there's no calories and it helps just coat the pan or whatever you're cooking so it doesn't stick. So this is what I go. To. This is my go-to. All right, so getting some oatmeal. Uh, like I said earlier, it's something that I eat on my rest days in the morning instead of cream of rice. So um, I like it better on rest days and training days too because I find it sits a little heavier. So on a training day, it's easier to eat the cream of rice and I prefer it. On a rest day, I love the oats. So get a bag of this since I'm running low. <laughs> All right. So 
So that was a typical grocery haul. Uh, I usually get groceries, sometimes I go twice a week if I need some odds and ends, but I usually get like the main stuff once a week. And uh, today, yeah, I spent about $250, which is, I would say in a week on food, I spend at least that. Sometimes it could be up to, you know, maybe $300 in a week on food for someone like me. So, you know, it's not cheap to eat enough to be a bodybuilder, especially like to be a bigger uh, pro level bodybuilder. So, you know, when people are like talking about how much you want to eat or how much you have to eat, it's like, you're gonna have to, you know, I would say for the average bodybuilder, you're gonna spend at least $200, if not more a week, you know? And I spend, like I said, upwards of like $300 a week on food. So, and that's like just, you know, the normal food I eat, right? So, uh, typical, typical bill, if this is something you want to do. So I'm just uh, cooking the flank, uh, that'll need to eat, so I'll cook it now, that way it's ready for my next meal, uh, and then we'll just, I'm just going to take uh, Tyson out for a walk, and I'm going to be answering some of the questions I got in my story yesterday. some questions that I got from the, the uh, what do you call it, ask me a question story I posted yesterday. So I'm gonna answer some of those as I walk. Ready, kid? All right. Come on, sit. So first question, explain the mindset you had in high school having 100% dedication to your diet. Uh, this is actually from a guy that I went to high school with. Um, I wouldn't say like it was necessarily to do with, you know, me being perfect with everything. I think I just had a different mindset than the average person my age at that point. Um, I just, I knew I wanted to improve my physique, so I knew I had to eat more food and I wasn't really eating like, like a bodybuilder necessarily. I was just eating more calories. Cause I would eat like peanut butter sandwiches and things like that, but I just knew from seeing one of my older brothers who was into it a bit uh, and what he did that I knew I had to, you know, eat more food. So that's pretty much what I was trying to do is just eat more food and, you know, start to work out and get the results I was looking for. So if you trained with one bodybuilder from each decade, who would you pick from the 50s to the 2020s? Uh, to be honest, it might sound bad, but from the 50s to the 60s, the only people I could think of that I'd want to be around is maybe the Weeder brothers. Uh, none of the bodybuilders from that era, I really can really think I'd pinpoint someone I'd want to train with. 70s, you know, Arnold DeFranco Colombo, 80s, I would say like Lee Haney, 90s, uh, Doreen Yates, Lee Priest, 2000s, uh, Jay Cutler, Ronnie Coleman, more modern. Uh, I'd say the only modern guy that I could think of, like as in my era, would be like maybe like James Hollingshead or a few of those guys. Or it's probably the only guy I could think of that'd be cool. I train with because you know I've been able to train the in and stuff. So you know none of the other pros currently I'm too. I wouldn't want to necessarily be like eager to train with, but it's like you know I'd train with anybody just to try a different style. Um, okay, next question. Oh, okay. So, how do you approach exercise selection during a workout as it progresses? Um, well, to be honest, usually I have a, a game plan of the exercises I'm going to do going into the training. So, I typically stick with that unless for some reason I tweak something or for some reason something's bothering me that day that I need to change it up. 
Um, the only thing that I might change up is, you know, the type of sets I'm doing in regards to, am I just doing straight work sets or am I gonna do, you know, different variations like a cluster set or, you know, uh, rest pause set, back off sets, rest like uh, drop sets, things like that. So typically the exercise selection is gonna stay the same unless there's another variable I have to worry about. Um, and another question along from the same person is, do you ever change the exercises in your workouts? And if so, what makes you decide to change them? Kind of a very similar question, but uh, usually I change it based on how my body's progressing or where I'm at in my training. So for example, in the off season, you know, I would typically stick with the same workouts and try and get better at them and try and improve my strength at the exercises, try and improve my training performance. And then going into prep, I would stick with those exercises and only adjust, you know, based on things like, oh, if like certain equipment might not be available in the gym or, um, you know, if I'm finding an exercise is bothering me because of, you know, a joint pain or lingering pains, then I might change it up. But, you know, if something's working and you're still seeing progress, then there's really no need to change it up. So that's the way I like to look at it. It's like you can progress at those movements and get better at those movements, get more out of those movements and not have to change it up just because, you know, boredom or whatever the case might be. Okay, so what's the largest meal plan you've ever been on calorie wise? And was it a challenge? I think the most calories I ever was eating in regards to a meal plan was it's probably like 2017, I think. I had, I briefly worked with uh, Justin Compton as a coach and he had me eat a lot of clean food. I was eating well over 7,000, pushing 8,000 calories a day. And it was all like clean food, you know, like chicken and rice kind of meals. So it's, it was crazy. I struggled really hard with that food. And I only did it for a few, a couple months. Um, and it was really challenging to get all that food in. Um, I think the biggest problem I did at the time was I wasn't doing any cardio. Uh, or very 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 little and if I would have done like more of a you know a daily steady state for 20-30 minutes I think I would have been able to eat the food better that's something that I've learned since then when it comes to off season so that was the most food I ever ate and in regards to clean food clean calories and it definitely was uncomfortable it was not it's not fun but you know when you're trying to grow and you're trying to put on size um, it's not a comfortable thing like you're not supposed to be comfortable so you got to really push outside those comfort zones to add significant amounts of muscle so you know get comfortable being uncomfortable next question just because it's funny uh is it true that josh who's uh my training partner currently is stronger than you but he's just shy no he's not Sorry, Josh. <laughs> All right, now, now for an actual question. Your thoughts on the power bodybuilding approach, powerlifting and bodybuilding. I think the power bodybuilding approach is great, especially for someone who's just starting out or even someone who's been doing it for a while like myself. Like, I just got back into doing deadlifts in the past six months and I hadn't done them in forever and I've progressed a lot of that movement and it's gonna you know, showcase in my posterior chain, especially my back, glutes and hamstrings when it comes to you know competing again so i think doing those basic movements like you know bench squat deadlift and uh, those basic compound lifts is very good when you just start out mind you i don't really do flat barbell bench press but you know different variations like incline or you know things like that can be very beneficial especially for a beginner so i think you should do that especially when you're starting out to really focus on those movements get the form good and get strong because that's what it's gonna to take to progress your physique. You know, it's not just about, you know, doing the fancy machines. It's about doing the itty gritty basic movements too to build a foundation. So I definitely think the power bodybuilding approach is uh, a good approach. So last question for this segment is, how do you pick a good bodybuilding sponsorship? Um, honestly, it is very, very challenging to get a like very nice contract days, you'd say, with a company in bodybuilding. So my best suggestion there is to focus on building your own brand as yourself and focus on promoting yourself and 
being the best at what you're trying to be at. And you know, if you're doing that and it's something that appeals to the market, then you'll get offers, you know? Like I, I, I don't know, cause I've never had any big sponsorships, so I can't really tell you any secrets or anything. So that's my best guess is, you know, focus on building yourself and your brand and then go from there. So I made him sick cause I can see another dog. <laughs> But yeah, so that's uh, that's all the legitimate questions for today. Just want to answer a few as I was walking, and uh, we're gonna head back in. I'm gonna get a meal in, take a bit of a nap, and then eat again, and then it's gym time. So this will be my next meal. Uh, so I got uh, like before cooked. It's uh, 400 grams of sweet potato, uh, 250 grams of uh, lean steak, so I use flank steak, and uh, 75 grams of green veggies, so asparagus, that's my go-to. So I'm gonna eat this uh, for my third meal, and then uh, I'm gonna take a nap. So, yeah, that'll be the next meal. What's up? All right, so what I'm doing here is uh, just mixing what I'll have in my intro workout. Uh, these are just EAAs. I just got a different flavor because I'm not sponsored, obviously, so I'm just buying whenever I feel like buying. Um, but this flavor is pretty good. I like the Z Zyklone <laughs> flavor. It tastes pretty good. So I throw in two scoops, which is about uh, 15 grams of EAAs uh, in my intro workout, and then I add the 500 mils of coconut water, and then I just throw in some extra water when I mix it in. Um, and that's what I'll have intro workout. Pre-workout, the only thing I really take is like I have coffee and then I'll show you my pre-workout meal as well. Then this is like my post-workout shake that I'll have. There's uh, 30 grams of whey isolate, uh, five grams of creatine and 50 grams of carb powder. So that'll be what I have after training. Uh, so we got those, good to go. Uh, and then I'll show you guys my pre-workout meal in a minute. All right, so pre-workout meal, meal number four. I have, I'm eating it already. Uh, so like about 50 grams of asparagus, uh, 250 grams of chicken, this is obviously before cooking, and 120 grams of rice before cooking. And I also add 10 grams of coconut oil just on after I heat it up so it just melts, tastes good. Um, and then I have an apple as well pre-workout. Because like I said, my calories are still uh, the same so far the last few weeks. I haven't dropped or anything, so I'm still having those extra, you know, fruit and stuff during the day. Uh, so I'll get this in and then be getting ready to head to the gym. Oh, and of course, you know, some coffee because you need that and you get a deadlift. All right, uh, just heading home from the gym now. Had a really good uh, hamstring and bicep session. So I didn't record my whole training session just for the purposes of 
you know, respecting some of the guidelines that they uh, they have in the gym now to make sure that we're, you know, keeping the, the distance and respecting those rules. So, but I did make sure I got my uh, important sets of deadlifts. So you guys are going to get to see a new PR that I set today on deadlifts. Uh, so that's going to be in the in this video. So it's going to be good. Um, so we're just heading home now. I got to two more meals to get in so I'm gonna go home and have my post-workout meal and then uh, my last meal which is my you know meal six before I go to bed so yeah all in all it's uh, this has been a good uh, good day of you know showing you guys what I do and you know I don't think it's anything <laughs> too exciting per se but you know it gives you a, kind of an insight into what a typical day is like for me on a training day versus uh, like I did before on a rest day. So, you know, and where my prep is at this point, like being uh, just over 15 weeks out. So, you know, it's been, it's good. It's going good. All right, so post-workout meal here, uh, a little bit after training, probably about an hour in total after I showered and had a shake right after the gym. So uh, what I got here is uh, 50 grams of pineapple, still kind of frozen. I kind of like eating it when it's half frozen. Um, and then I got 50 grams of asparagus, 250 grams of flank, that's measured before cooking. And this was uh, 120 grams of rice before cooking, um, which is around 300 grams after cooked. So get this po post-workout meal in, and then I'll have one more meal uh, before, before bed, which is in like, I'll probably eat it in like an hour, about an hour and a half, so. Let's do it. All right guys, here we are. Meal number six, last meal of the day, finally. So, <laughs> doesn't, doesn't want to listen when I'm on camera because I'm distracted. Anyway, so the, what I got here is uh, half an avocado, so it's not an exact measurement of avocado, but I typically buy them around the same size, so it's half an avocado. And I have 400 grams of egg whites, two whole eggs, I also put some sea salt on this meal, and that's ketchup. It's real ketchup, not that sugar-free crap. It's just gross. No offense, everybody likes that, but I just use normal ketchup, and it's not very much. So, calories, not really a big deal there. Um, so, before I eat this meal, I just wanted to touch on uh, my interpretation and opinion on when it comes to meal timing. Because a lot of people, you know, think like, oh, I should eat every two hours, or every three hours, or I have to eat X amount of time before I work out, after I work out. And in a perfect world, yes, that all matters, but like you have to kind of base it on what your day's like. So, you know, if you're someone that gets up at 5 a.m. and goes to bed at 10 p.m., your day's longer, you're gonna have to stretch those meals out longer, or have even smaller, more frequent meals, whatever fits your schedule. Uh, for myself, like I generally try to have like my meals uh, earlier in the day on a training day, it's every two to three hours. And then, you know, when I, by the time I have my pre-workout meal, go to train and then come home, it's almost like four or five hours between those meals, you know? So, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly two to three hours between the meals, so don't obsess over that. Just getting the food in and trying to have it at consistent times day to day is the important factor. So I would just say, you know, general guideline, try and have your first meal within an hour of waking up and your last meal like about an hour or so before you go to bed. And then the meals in between, you know, if you can get them in every three hours, then that's great. If it's a little bit different, like one meal is two hours apart, the next meal is four hours apart, whatever, don't stress about it, just get them in. So I'm gonna get my last meal in and then, uh, you know, just relax and get some sleep and do it again tomorrow. So <clears throat> I hope you guys enjoyed my full day of eating and getting to see me, you know, do some deadlifts, lift some heavy weight. Uh, <laughs> so if you guys really like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and give me a comment of something you'd like to see next in my prep, like something you'd like to see me train, lifestyle things, whatever it may be, let me know and I'll, you know, I'll make it happen as my prep progresses. So, of course, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you subscribe now.